Okay, folks, so uh, this is uh, PyScript Fun on the, what is it? It's the 26th of September, my gosh. Where's the year gone? It only feels like February to me. Okay, so it's going to be Christmas soon, so get your PyScript Fun Christmas ideas going, is what I would say. Um, so what's PyScript Fun? It's where we come together and we show each other fun things, because they're fun. Um, and uh, I have a fun thing to show, which will probably lead very nicely into a really great fun thing that uh, Andrea will uh, lay out as well. And um, so the first thing, I I'll just go straight into it. Madur, have you got anything fun to show? Or are you just here for the laughs? He's grinning at me. I he might have. Oh. I, I might have, but I'm asking Martin if, if you want to right now. Ah, right. Okay. So that might be cool. That might be cool. So we'll, um, we'll save that as a maybe uh, in, in third place then. So uh, I'm going to start then. Um, so if I uh, just head over to Visual Studio um, and uh, you can't see that, can you? Because I need to share my screen. Uh, share my screen. If I move you lot over there, uh, you should see Visual Studio Code. Yes. Can I have a thumbs up or something that says that you can see Visual Studio Code? Yep. Thumbs up. OK. So one of the things that uh, we've been doing recently is uh, refactoring the test suite because we're refactoring the whole repo as we go along to make the code quality and the layout and everything nice uh, for people. Um, and so uh, so this this has landed in main, which is rather cool. So we have tests for all sorts of different things, testing the config, all the things, all the different things in the uh, in the um, in the standard PyScript namespace, uh, and you know things like the WebSocket and FFI and things like that. And we're using MicroPyScript to make that work. And so if I uh, open this as a live server. There we go. Uh, and these, that's the test suite running in MicroPython. Uh, and it took, how much did it take? It took half a second to run. Um, the equivalent test suite before took almost 30 minutes. Um, so <laughs> I think that's a good improvement. Uh, and we could do other things, for instance, like uh, type equals pi. So this is going to run the test suite with pyodide. This is pretty cool. You can see Pyodide is going to be starting. I hope it's going to be starting. Here we go. So this is Pyodide. There are some of the tests that uh, only work in Pyodide. For instance, this is using Pillow. So that's why it's an expensive test that's kind of blocked. And then when Pillow's finished, there we see the rest of the test suite is done. So that only takes 12 seconds, which is still pretty damn good. Okay. And so what we've done, uh, when we... Um, uh, we, we have a whole bunch of JavaScript tests, integration tests that we run on build, and we have a whole bunch of Python tests that we run on build. And if you can see in the Python ones, we have MicroPython on the main thread, Pyodide on the main thread, MicroPython on a worker, and Pyodide on a worker. So the same test suite is being run in all the different sort of four contexts in which PyScript's uh, API, the PyScript namespace, might be used. So... Um, so why don't I uh, demo that in action? So here we go. Uh, if I do that, uh, I do npm uh, run build. So I'm going to run a build now. Um, this is how we make PyScript, folks. Uh, we get the special magic web Yoda sprinkle sparkle dust. And then, uh, and then uh, we, we type npm run build. Uh, I'm trying to make looking at a command line interesting here with my um, <laughs> commentary. Uh, but essentially what it's doing is making sure that all the right assets are in the right place. And at the very end, it'll run the test suite against the newly built version of PyScript. And we should be able to see wonderful things happening. So here we go. It's running these 20 tests um, uh, in four workers using uh, Playwright. Uh, and this will take a few seconds to work. Um, and then we know we've got a good build and then we could, for instance, go and release that. Um, and when we do an actual release, what happens is this very same script is run by our continuous integration 
um, infrastructure running uh, via GitHub Actions, and that is the thing that puts all the files in the right place, so the thing with the right version number goes to the right place on the internet. And you can see, you know, there is a uh, MicroPython async when this is working, and we're getting to the Python unit tests. MicroPython on main thread took only three seconds to run, uh, and we should see uh, Pyodide and the other ones working as well. But I notice that there's already been a failure. Hmm, I wonder why that might be failing. And this is going to be a nice segue into uh, the next section. And hello to the new joiner, whoever that is. Uh, it's Martin. Hello, Martin. Uh, you've thankfully for you missed about 30 seconds of me trying to talk over a, a test suite running. Um, um, so this is going to take a while because, of course, it's, it's running the tests on all the different possible... Um, uh, combinations of, uh, of of where uh, the uh, PyScript namespace will run, but when it finishes, we'll get uh, you know clearly this is not working. Uh, one of the JavaScript tests has failed. Oh man, why is this taking so long? It always takes longer than you think when you're being recorded. Is the theory of the universe that uh, that I've come up with? Um, this should work. Ah, it might. Uh, okay, so my computer's busy because it's both recording video and taking part in a video call and all of that stuff. Okay, so yeah, that all passed eventually. Um, yeah, it took one minute. I don't know. Point three, is that thirty seconds or twenty seconds? Is a third of a minute? I don't know. Anyway, we have a problem here uh, where um, we have uh, Pyodide Plus's plus multiple terminals via a worker going on. So um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Bum, 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 bum. And uh, move you back over here so everyone can see that. And that segues. So this is where I've got. I, I was doing some work this morning on the test suite and things. And we'd found some problems and I was fixing them up this morning. And uh, at this point, I noticed that there were some interesting things going on with the JavaScript based tests. Now, with the regularity that Disney have of producing Star Wars related uh, miniseries, uh, so PyScript regularly creates problems that allows uh, Web Yoda uh, to swing into action. And that leads us in a lovely segue from my faffing about with uh, test suites to uh, what Web Yoda, uh, Andrea, has been doing today. Uh, now, I just want to say that before Andrea starts, Andrea pinged me on Slack and he used the words distributed and garbage collector. In the same sentence. Now, I happen to believe that if you use the words distributed and garbage collection in the same sentence, something has gone terribly wrong. Andrea, the floor is yours. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Um, so there are a few things going on. All these things are actually good because they... At the end of the day, it made sense to me. So the tests all, are doing what tests are supposed to do. They highlight problems and we can fix them then. That's the yeah, important. yeah, it's not just that. Yeah. So first of all, CI is low. And so is my laptop and apparently also Nicolas' laptop. Because if I can share um, my screen. Okay, coming through. Your wife will have it with. So we we found an issue. I fixed the issue. We so it was fixed. And now I'm trying with a different machine, which is not my laptop, it's my desktop device, which is a gaming rig, let's say. And so with my laptop, as soon as I refresh this page and I press this memory garbage collector thing. I see an error. This machine, it doesn't matter whatever I do, it doesn't happen. So that means also that Chrome or MicroPython or PyDot, I don't know, to be honest, but it means that I can reproduce this error only on my laptop. And in Nicolas' case, uh, in case uh, it's going to be like 
sporadic, not uh, not all, every time. And in CI, it's going to be even more frequent, which is annoying because we want these tests to pass. So I, I don't want to go into the test details. This is just... Um, it's basically the main page bootstrap into workers. One is MicroPython and one is Pyodide. They are just running into a REPL mode. So I can I can type here um, 1 plus 2 and I can type here 3 plus 4. And that's it. So th th there's nothing special about this test. What is special is that they are running on this, at, at, at the same time, asynchronously on the same page, and things might get nasty there. And uh, I drew a chart uh, out of my best possibilities, <laughs> as I'm not um, an artist, as you know, but I think this might summarize what's going on in, in here or why CI is failing. So, and Playwright is also failing uh, after updates. It wasn't failing before. So here is my conclusion about what's going on. So MicroPython starts fast, super fast compared to PyLite, uh, especially when, even if, especially because there are never uh, dependencies, but even without dependencies, it's still super fast. Behind the scene, when MicroPython in a worker asks, asks for a window class, the it cross worker window class, so PyScript and PolyScript behind the scene provides this ability to refer anything from the global context once at least. And if it's not there and it's unknown, it's going to be assigned to a number because we have cross worker main thread uh, communication channel. The channel cannot cannot pass along references. It has to pass, it has to provide uh, identifiers in terms of, in this case, integers to recognize what you're asking for. So MicroPython is asking for any generic class on the main thread, which is in this case, let's say a global class. It could be an event, custom event, or um, promise, or literally anything that is available as a class or as a reference on the main thread um, is going to be returned as an integer. It's like, okay, you asked for this thing. I didn't know it. So let's say you ask for the first time about this thing. You ask for anything, nothing else, um, and uh, you got assigned. So you are number one. So the MicroPython uses the class because it's already bootstrapped, it's already running, and and, and Py, in this case, uh, our script, our code running in MicroPython case, can collect actually one because it doesn't need it anymore. So it uses it once, the code is done, and MicroPython can say, hey, you know what? I don't need this reference anymore. And behind the scene, the, we have a, the stack that says, hey, you know what? MicroPython doesn't need the reference anymore. How about eventually we remove this, this number one from our stack so we don't need the proxy and we keep the memory uh, usage lower. But MPy can collect. It doesn't mean that the moment it uses class, it will collect it. It will happen eventually later. Now, Pyodide eventually bootstraps in the meantime and ask for the same window class. And in this case, it's going to ask for the window class. And the Windows class is going to say, hey, you know what? Nobody asked to collect it. So it's a known reference. There's no need for me on the Windows side, on the main thread, to create another proxy for this reference. So get this one. So you ask for it, you get it. Meantime, MicroPython collects the garbage collector in there, kicks in, um, and Pi collects one. So on the main thread, one gets removed from the known proxies that can be handy later on. And Pyodide eventually, after a while, um, 
asked to use this one reference on the main thread and the main thread goes like, you know what? I have no idea what you're asking about. This, this number one, number one, what? One? No way. Unknown, undefined. And so that, that moment, you try to create an instance out of something that cannot be created because the main thread doesn't have any knowledge about this number one a initial reference to this class that anyone before Pyodide or anyone even before MicroPython asked for it. So this is the thing and an error is born. So unable to unknow anything. So you cannot, you cannot uh, access properties. If it wasn't a class, it was just, let's say the navigator uh, namespace and you want to, or I don't know, anything else. So anything that is on the global and you access it once or any properties in, in general on the, on the, on the main thread, uh, they get referenced at once and they, they don't create a proxy every single time because otherwise the, the project itself will be super memory greedy because um, every time you ask for something, you, you're going to provide again a new, a new ID. That's, that's wasteful. And we want to work on mobile phones too. So that makes no sense. So the logic, this actually demonstrates that instead of having <laughs> memory leak issues, we have the opposite, <laughs> which I don't know. I, I couldn't find the name. We don't have memory leak issues. We have the opposite. Memory is actually freed <laughs> greedily or earlier. And, uh, and, and, and we need to understand how to tackle this. It's so amazing. Yeah, yeah, amnesia. amnesia. Uh, Martin has his hand up. He has a question. I'm not sure if you can see that he's got his hand up. But Ma Martin, it, it feels like a good good pause for you to ask your question. So right, so yeah, right. That's a really good explanation, Andrea. So it's basically battle of the uh, garbage collectors um, <laughs> on the on the Python side, on the Python side. So we have yeah, yeah. microbiome with a different. Um, that's a uh, orchestration of the garbage collector and Pyodide has a different or orchestration. So this situation that you're so seeing could we, here, not about so anything. Literally. This is me talking completely off my head, not knowing anything about how it all works. Would one solution be the idea that the X worker stuff does magic? We have, we have a behind the scenes scoped namespace so that the X word at X work per, per in per per garbage collector, right? Per interpreter, right? So xworker.window.class in Pyodide refers, it has its own namespace and MicroPython has its own namespace and they can both garbage collect their own things. But if they're, okay. if they're, if they're referring to the same thing on the main thread... Well, it doesn't... So what we've got is, uh, perhaps we should... Uh, here's another off the top of my head type situation, a bit like yours, Martin. Perhaps you could reference count. So I know I've got a reference uh, from MicroPython, plus one. I've got a reference for Pyodide, uh, plus one. I don't need a reference for MicroPython, minus one. It's not garbage collected because we've still got that one reference left for uh, Pyodide on the work air. Hey, Fabio. Uh, we're talking about everybody's fun subject, which is garbage collectors. Um uh, I don't know. So that, that, wouldn't, that wouldn't work. That wouldn't I, I work. I tell you what. Okay. I tell you what. If you access window document any times in MicroPython, it doesn't mean you're referring or you're increasing the counter. Yeah. It's just MicroPython using window document is always the same reference. Yeah. So there's no way to tell because that that window document goes. From the worker to the main, and I ask you for, do you know this reference? Yes, give me the whatever I have to do to, to keep going. Yeah. So the reference counting here doesn't work because right. it's never going to go away anyway. In the document property a gazillion times, and you never want to increase that yeah. reference count a gazillion times. It's still you, MicroPython, accessing the. So the reference counting you're talking about works if. The, the tech behind the scene, which is coincident uh, module, uh, understands who's asking for what. So understands different environment, different 
environment. So you, you, you can say, okay, MicroPython is asking to do document once and any other time it's still MicroPython asking for the same thing. So there's no need to erase that thing. And when MicroPython tell us that window do document uh, can, can be go, can go, can be collected, um, we have to check. Does anyone else ask in the meantime about window.document? And if that was Pyodide, then yes. In that case, we need an orchestration about cross boundaries, cross realms, cross words, reference counting. Although this might be a wonderful solution, to be honest. Um, it's complicated. <laughs> so the rest of this graph uh, is actually a long story short about what's going on. So cross worker windows is one. Runtimes are many, and that's what we are discussing here. Um, but coincident works by DC hints and was never developed to work by multiple ZC hints because I never thought about that. And that was silly of me because I I thought, okay, somebody is asking for this, is going to use it. And I never thought about the, uh, the combination of, of um, both MicroPython and Pyodide asking for the same thing eventually in different times. And so they have different ZC. And so the shenanigans are happening. Yes, we can see in current test case. Um, the solution to me, um, so globally address classes don't gain RAM once removed. What does it mean? If you ask for a global thing that is known on the window, that thing doesn't need to get collected. Okay, we ha we, we create a thin proxy layer on top of it, but the proxy is pretty, is pretty uh, small in terms of memory use. It's just an indirection to whatever underneath there is. And so do we need to collect whenever someone is accessing global things? Do we need to collect that? No, because any other module in the future that is going to be imported at runtime, for instance, could use the same primitives and they could reuse the window.document, the window.promise, the window.custom element, uh, custom event or, or, or anything. Custom, custom, Custom elements actually was a good uh, reference too. So all these things never, never go away from the main thread because they are in memory bound. So they are once you access those, those are uh, and even before those already take an amount of RAM um, in your system. So we don't need to probably do that. Um, and still, when you from your MicroPython talking about um reference counting in MicroPython, when you create a new instance it's going to be always different from the new instance of the same class that you create in pyodide but the source class is going to be always the same so for instances references and all this kind of stuff we don't care because right now the actually this failing test demonstrates that our uh strategy to avoid memory leaks is working overly well <laughs> and so we have issues about memory being released um amnesia before before it should be amnesia <laughs> exactly um so my my solution is to avoid trashing globally rich proxies and um, that's what i've done as a first fix when nicholas told me hey let's start failing and I, th and, I, and I thought okay what's going on and i digged into it and i thought okay Something is going on with the garbage collector. So here, MicroPython and PyDot are using the same PyScript code to bootstrap. And maybe this reference in MicroPython has been reported as not needed anymore. And the PyDot at the same time used that. And it was too late because it was released already from main. And so removing the caching locally in terms of scope and variables and this kind of stuff worked for one test, but it started showing errors in other tests and i thought okay this worked but this is the tip of the iceberg and uh, and um, and the, the the rest of the story is actually this one the one i tried yeah. to 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 tell you and so yeah that's that's all i had to share and uh, and nothing else but it's it's been some sort of friday uh 
Thursday fun, <laughs> but not really. I think you've done a magnificent job because honestly, um, oh man, uh, like you said, using the words distributed and garbage collectors in the same sentence is never anybody's idea of fun. About as much fun as having root canal work with your dentist, I guess. Uh, but the point is, is that we understand what the problem is and we can move forwards with that. Um, I guess I, I, I can't help but thinking also, uh, this is a, I, earlier this week, I pointed out to, to Martin and this will make him smile in a kind of a raised eyebrow. I told you so sort of a way, uh, where I said, Oh, don't worry. These things, uh, we've put in the documentation, we've given you a big bazooka. Um, you know, uh, if you start to make, if you start to mess around from work, different workers with the same main thread, you know, aspects of the dorm or whatever they're going to be treading on each other well that's exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's exactly what we've been doing in our tests um so uh yeah uh, we, we we want to we want to solve the issue we don't yeah, want yeah, to yeah, exactly to exactly people. it's their fault right because this is definitely nobody fault and it's also extremely rare as a as a as a circumstance to encounter i have to refresh i don't know how many times my browser try i don't know how many times my test locally to see the failure but once i got the the slow device enough to reproduce uh after garbage collecting all the things uh, quickly with my mouse and and that made me realize what was going on so it's a matter of timing but it's not timing that we do wrong. It's a garbage collecting timing that might interfere with other uh, things. So it's extremely rare. Nothing to be super worried about. At the same time, it's an issue that we need to tackle. Yeah, don't it is don't run your nuclear power station on it just yet. <laughs> okay, so... um. Andrea, that was a magnificent exposition. Thank you very much uh, for that. I'm looking at Mador, who who looks like... Oh, no, he is awake. He, he was just looking down. He looked a little bit asleep there. Uh, Mador, do you have permission from, uh, from, from Mr. Big that you're allowed to uh, demo whatever it was that you're allowed to demo? Yeah, I uh, guess Martin yeah. only can... <laughs> yes, uh, let me do a demo. Okay, so this is Martin, a... come on. Let us know what this is. My first thing is like, how do I find the share your screen button on um, Discord? But there you go. Screen. So I have uh, Nicolas and Madur frozen, and Mark is a moving uh, icon. <laughs> so this is going to be a very short demo. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Can you see Old Dawn? Old Dawn. Yes, Old Should Dawn. Yes, three times. The name three, yeah. three Old Dawns. So this is, uh, it's it's only in dev we um, at the moment, and it's still under uh, development, but this is the idea of channels so that you can write, for example, applications that send messages and everyone can listen to them. So you'll see as I, if I refresh this guy over here, these two get notified, oh, he, he unsubscribed and he subscribed, and I can send a message to everybody. So this is like what, uh, for Chris at Tufts, if you're listening, this is your your um, pub sub system. So I can send messages to anybody in the um, any other applications that are listening on on a channel. So and this is all done with web workers. It is uh, no, it's done with. It's just very. So let me show you the code. It's just web socket. Right. Not so, web, as, sorry, as that's a, what I meant. Did I say web yeah, workers? Yeah, sorry, yeah, that so, garbage yeah. collection nightmare has kind of like yeah. infected my brain. Yes, I meant web Correct. work. Web, web, oh, I can't even say it now. Web sockets. Yes. Yes. So basically, this is my little. De it's currently JavaScript, but it's going to be part of the SDK. Um, so you and will be written in Python. So basically, I just subscribe to my web socket. I listen to messages coming in, and I can send messages going out. Um, but the idea is, you know, you can write now it allows you to write things like a tic tac toe game and you can you can send communicate between um, the the players in your tic tac toe or anything like that. But, or, or like Chris often does write for sending data around the places, publish streaming data to a channel and everybody else can listen to it and do a plot or do whatever you wish. Fantastic. So. Um, yeah, I mean, 
all those cases. That's that's basically um, that was it. Perfect. And um, my gosh. So uh, yeah, what I would love to see is that, but in Python rather than JavaScript. Clearly, using the exactly. the, the PyScript dot exactly. WebSocket it should allow you to do that pretty pretty easily. Yeah. Um, wow, that's incredible. That's amazing. So it means that, for instance, with Invent, we could start to make a WhatsApp clone in five minutes. Exactly. Bravo. And so, and, and so we, we're using Redis under the hood as our pub sub bus. Yeah. Um, and so as soon as we get a Redis instance stood up in prod, we can go to prod with it, basically. So it's not so all the codes there. It's all. It's all um, and then we've got some issues to talk about um, in terms of user facing right should right now you don't have to declare a channel but our thought is that maybe you do have to declare a channel in your in your pyscript.com say oh i want to make a channel yes um and then you can only use those names just to prevent yes you know channels coming and going all over the place the scalability but there'd, just, there'd be no technical reason for that other than just a helping making it clear yeah. to people oh i've created a channel yeah. use my channel you know so it, it helps with the conceptualization of what what on earth is going on um exactly yeah exactly. I, I i must admit i i oh four years ago maybe just before covid um i created a multi-user dungeon and of course the that needed a message bus and i was surprised because i i was using redis as a basically a json store and i was just throwing objects right. into it it's it's a really great key value json blob type thing that you can yeah. use um and then i you know i noticed it had this kind of uh, message bus thing built in and and it was an absolute joy to use um from python yeah. uh, i really big fan of big fan of redis <laughs> yeah um, and i think for us right the underlying technology it doesn't store messages it, they're delivered immediately yeah and so for us, it's like we don't we don't need the the idea of this is you wouldn't necessarily you wouldn't use this technology if you're if it was a critical system, right? Yeah. There are chances that a message gets dropped somehow along the way, right? Yeah. You know, a, a prod gets rolled or something, right? But I think for the use case of of PyScript apps, I think it's it's super simple. Yeah. No data is stored anywhere. The messages come in, go out. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I I remember um, because I've used Rabbit, which is written in Erlang, which is this massive thing. Um, and then Rabbit I looked, MQ. I, uh, yeah, Rabbit MQ. And uh, I I looked at the uh, Redis source yeah. code to see how they did it. Uh, and honestly, there's not a lot of C <laughs> that yeah, make it right. work, that makes it work, which was a wonderful thing. Uh, because there's not a lot yeah. to go wrong. Um really yeah uh, and if things do go wrong it can only be a certain class of problems rather than all of these sorts of possible problems which is the problem that i found in when we were using it with fluid db which was a, a, another company i worked for um that made heavy use of rabbit mq um but uh this sounds wonderful uh i can't wait to see what people build with that uh hopefully yeah. we'll have lots of fun demos in PyScript fun yes so we'll get that yeah we'll get that out to prod Probably won't be this week, but I'm hoping it would be um, next week or the week after. So Bravo. Perfect. That's great. And I, I'm looking forward to using it, you know, with Invent and things like that. We're going to have a lot of... Yeah, uh, exactly. The Invent, the Invent WhatsApp clone, right? Yeah, That's yeah. what we can... Oh, there's more. <laughs> uh, uh, let's just yeah. say Josh and I have been investigating Tesla APIs. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> So I so I can remotely just, drive your. <laughs> it's not just geese that honk. It's all I'm like, saying. <laughs> yeah. if, if you notice one day your Tesla just starts reversing out of your driveway, you'll know it's me on the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Uh, yeah. Python on the edge or on the edge of your seat. Anyway. Ah. <laughs> yes. oh, well, that's that was that was great. That was fantastic. I'm so pleased to see that that landing and. Uh, and Madhu, was it you? Because you know, you said, "Can I?" Uh, I mean, was, was it you who who wrote this, or um, is this a team no, effort? No, no, together, 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 team effort, team effort. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Well, congratulations to the .dot com team for, as always, sterling work and excellent uh, engineering going on there. Um, I don't think there's anything else uh, scheduled for PyScript Fun, so. Um, 
Uh, I'll see for, I'm going to stop the video in a second. Uh, but if you're watching online, uh, this happens every fortnight on a Thursday. Um, and uh, what an epic this one has been. Um, <laughs> so going from tests to garbage collection to message passing, uh, all in the space of about 40 minutes. So uh, that's it. I'll see you folks around.